Hey, this is Wednesday, December 2nd, uh, and we're going to get into some more stuff about Shadow Club. This is my regular class, uh, so advanced kids, don't you be trying to sneak in and listen to this stuff. It not be for you. Uh, so we're going to do, if you have turned in late work, and apparently a lot of you have done the work, you just don't email me. I do not look for your late work. It is way too hard for me to look for your late work. You know what's easier for me to do? Make fun of you during class. So uh, I will continue to just harass you during class uh, until you actually email me and get your stuff turned in and stuff like that. So I figured I would just let you know from there. Uh, we're going to get into talking about Shadow Club stuff again. Kid that I just let in again. Again, I will keep booting you until I actually get a chance to see your face, to see who you are. If I don't get a chance to see face, then that's why you keep finding yourself kicked out of class. Just trying to give you a heads up if you're trying to make life a little bit easier on yourself. Uh, and then again, you're going to want to get out your Shadow Club book because uh, we will be talking about Shadow Club book here in just a moment to try and help you out. And uh, it's on that one. Uh, if you don't have a copy of Shadow Club, all right. Eric, you are the kid I am talking to. Eric, if I do not see your face, I remove you. I was trying to be nice by not saying name. Then, but then there you, that's your room. Hey, that's your forehead. Still have to see your actual face, child. Move to there, but you're getting closer. Uh, I have to actually see who you are. And if not, then that's when you get removed. Hang on, let me go to this. Good. That's still your forehead. You're getting closer. Keep going, child. All the way to the rest of you gets up. There you go. Thank you. Now you can go back to hiding. All right, and that's there and let that kid in. Um, if you don't have a copy of book, you're more than welcome to go on to here to download a downloaded copy of it. Again, we have Shadow Club page. Um, and as far as the Shadow Club page, you can find ebook on there and you can find audio book on there. Um, and you might want to use that because you are going to have to read chapter four on your own today. And so if you don't want to read it with your brain, you can read it with your ears. And that is absolutely fine with me too. It happens, Darnell. I forgive you. You came right back. And so there, here is your official assignment of homework, which is IXL E.5, uh, which is officially being assigned to you. You can find the links on my Canvas page. You can also go to IXL and it'll be on there. It should be my only IXL I have officially assigned to you. It is connected to our quiz coming up for you guys on Thursday slash Friday. If you do well on quiz, then you don't have to worry about the IXL. Uh, I did push it back a day. It is not due until Sunday. So I said before I made them do Saturday. It is now due Sunday night because I don't have to worry about getting grades posted as quickly since I don't have to worry about putting them up on the wall. So because we're all virtual, I could push back your due date a little bit. Uh, Ava, I appreciate your hat again. I like the collection of things you're going through there. It makes me smile. Your hat game is on point. And then the quiz coming up tomorrow or Friday. With that one, I have to do a little bit of reviewy thing on there uh, because one, there's that shadow club, but I have not had a chance to put Annabelle Lee or Richard Corey on one. And last time we actually had a quiz, you guys struggled with haiku and idioms. So I am putting haiku and idioms back on this one too. So I'm gonna sort of run through a quick little reminder thing to try and help you out. Here's my remindery thing. One, you get to use your handouts. If you've not thrown them away, you get to use them. The simile is where you compare two nouns using like or as. If you have your handout, use it. Metaphor, you compare two nouns by stating one noun is the other. So again, make sure you know how similes and metaphors work. Irony is going to pop up in Shadow Club, so make sure you know what irony is and how it works. Same thing with foreshadowing. Again, you should have your handouts. Uh, the clues that are left in the story, we'll definitely be talking about both of those. Haiku, that was the three-line poem we did. Uh, you, know, you are a goober. No one likes to look at you. Turn off camera. <laughs> Nicely done. Me. So that is your haiku, except your haiku should be about your and stuff like that. Uh, and then also idioms, that homework that six of you refuse to do, uh, where it talks about figurative and literal, it's popping up on the quiz again. If you did the homework, you can use it on the quiz to help you out, just like if you did the notes and stuff like that. And then don't forget the Annabelle Lee poem about dude and Annabelle Lee and the angels being jealous and him going crazy and breaking into her grave to sleep next to her. That's going to be on quiz. And Richard Corey, the guy who is all super rich and then super sad and then super dead. Uh, that is also going to be on quiz. And I'll be connecting those to Shadow Club, the story that we're reading today. Questions? No, Mr. Boviak, we're just going to stare at you. 
good job, fifth period. I just wanted to make sure so I didn't have to harass you too much. Thank you for nodding your head. I'm assuming you're nodding your head at me making fun of you. And you're welcome. That's my gift to you. So let's get ready to read and talk about Shadow Club. Let's see if when you guys are there, before we get into it, we left off with, uh, ooh. So, well, I am still making connections and I'm still gonna have you guys do the whole connection-y thing. So with the whole connection-y thing, we're not going to talk about them today. We're gonna talk about them tomorrow, only because class period is shorter today. So I'm gonna end up reading probably all the way up to the bell. But tomorrow, in order for you to get a chance to take the quiz and not have me torture you, then we're gonna have to have you make the connections then. So continue making connections and don't give up on that uh, because we're gonna keep doing all of those. All right, let's see what we have. We got to our main characters, Jerry and Cheryl. We met Austin. We found out that Austin is a bit of a Kyle. Uh, which I found out is the male version of a Karen, uh, because apparently people think Austin would ask to speak to your manager because apparently he's a wee bit of a jerk. And so we also- the No, it's up. Chad. It's I've Chad's. also heard Chad too. So whatever one you want to go with, I've heard Chad's and I've heard Kyle's. I've also heard of Blaine. But anyway, whatever your name for jerky person is, go for that. There's also David. There's also David's. We are not using David because that's my name. So David's are wonderful people full of love and everybody loves them. Never use that name, but just kidding. If you want to use David, that's not going to kill me either. And yes, we got to meet Lost. We had Lost. Oh, and Tyson, uh, the guy who's queer, not, not the LGBTQ queer, but the weird and strange and different kind of queer uh, because he's definitely a little bit on the odd side. And he got into a fight and fought like the Tasmanian devil. We get to see Stopwatch. We got the running, got the crocodile smile, which was Austin Pace and his weird, creepy smile thing he does. And then they talked in this, which we got to them. That was him and Cheryl, Jared and Cheryl talking about torturing people, which sounds like a dream come true to me. And then we got to the Tasmanian devil because that's how Tyson fights because he likes to bite people um, and stuff like that. All right, we're not to that yet. We'll keep it on the Tasmanian devil picture. All right, where we left off with you guys was page 37. So that's what we'll pick up with you guys. Uh, at the top of page 37, we had just found out that uh, Tyson had got into the fight and then walked away. And we had just left off with someone trying to talk to Jared. So page 37 up towards the top. As the homeroom bell rang, I heard a voice behind me. Uh, Jared, I, uh, I'd like to speak with you for a minute. I recognized the voice right away. I turned to see Coach Schuler. You know that feeling you get when you think something great is gonna happen and your heart misses a beat? and then you get like shivers down your spine? Well, that's what I felt just then. Why would Coach Schuler pull me aside to talk to me unless he had good news for me about the captaincy? Hi, Coach, what's up? I said cheerfully. You got a minute? Yeah. Great. Uh, why don't you come into my office? I followed him down the hall and into the gym where it was much quieter. Our footsteps echoed in the huge empty gym as we crossed it. It was cold and the air had the sour smell of the floor varnish. We went into the gym office. Have a seat, he said. And he picked up his clipboard and began to look at it. By the way, that was my connection I made on that one because I also use the clipboard and look at it all the time. So we both are clipboard buddies. Um, has, no kidding. I'm assuming you mean the Tasmanian devil and, and not the coach because that'd be kind of creepy. Uh, but that makes sense. Yeah. Have a seat, he said, and then picked up his clipboard and began to look at it. He sat in the other chair behind the desk. I uh, totaled up the results. Yeah, I said, trying to sound like I didn't really care. It was pretty close. Yeah, he looked up from his clipboard. I really couldn't read his expression. He had a poker face. And I guess you could never tell what was in his head. He stalled, keeping me in suspense. I didn't have a poker face. I knew all the expectations in my eyes. In my lap, I had my fingers crossed so hard, my knuckles were turning white. Again, that was me as a kid. I used to be a big finger crosser all the time with my fingers from there. Hang on, I have to do a thing real quick. Stop it, computer's acting up. Computer, act up. There we go, much better. <clears throat> you didn't get it, Jared. Um, I'm sorry. At first, it was like I didn't quite hear him. My fingers were still crossed, as if crossing them could change what he had said. 
I still held my breath, but then what my ears had heard made its way into my brain. You know that sinking feeling? The kind you get about 10 seconds before you realize that you're going to throw up? Well, I didn't feel like I was going to throw up, but that sinking feeling stayed around for a long time. Before I went into his office, I'd been prepared to lose, but then he called me in and I was sure that I had won. Why couldn't he have just let me find out when he posted it? I could have handled that. It wouldn't have been so bad. I would have just looked and walked away. But now he had gotten my hopes up and I couldn't just walk away. I had to sit there and feel lousy. Like I said, continued the coach, it was a close race. You and Austin were neck and neck all the way. He began to fiddle with his clipboard. If it wasn't his clipboard, it was his whistle. If it wasn't his whistle, it was his glasses. He always fiddled with something. Listen, I, uh, I know how much you want to be captain. And because of all your hard work, I'm, I'm going to make you a very special offer. As a runner-up, you're entitled to something that's very special. So I'm, I'm making you assistant coach. Assistant coach? I might not sound so bad to you, but you have to understand that assistant coach was a position I don't know, usually given to some younger kid who was not good enough to run around to be on the team. He might as well have told me I was a team mascot. Assistant coach? That's right. Well, what do I get to do? Take attendance, get equipment, and stuff like that. What am I supposed to say to that? Austin gets all the glory and power of being team captain, and I get to take attendance. I tried to be enthusiastic, but I just couldn't. And the coach could see it in my eyes. I didn't have a poker face. Uh, thanks. You don't seem too happy about it. No, I'm happy. I'm just a little upset about not being captain, that's all. Sure, I understand you. You can hang around here for a few minutes if you like. I'll, I'll give you a late pass for homeroom. No, it's okay. I'm sure he could tell by my voice that it wasn't okay. I didn't have a poker voice either. Listen, there's, there's always high school. Right, I said, silently thinking how lost in space would win again when we were seniors in high school. Thanks. It was the least I could do. You're, you're a good kid, Jared. I, I feel bad for you. No, don't, don't feel bad for me. I don't want you feeling bad for me. Well, I mean that I think sometimes life gives people the, the short end of the stick. You know, and I think you deserve more. Thanks said for the 1200th time i'll see you this afternoon yeah be early so you can take attendance the hall was empty when i left the gym except for one kid none other than lost in space himself was standing outside the gym doors he was waiting for me it wasn't a coincidence oh you spoke to the coach already huh yeah so he told you that i won how'd you already know Ah, he spoke to me first. You don't think he'd tell you before he told me, do you? Austin waited for an answer, but I didn't give him one. I'll bet you like being team secretary. Hey, assistant coach. Now, all it really is is a team secretary. Hey, I'll make sure to give you lots of memos to type. Maybe you can come over to my house sometime and <laughs> answer some phones. I turned and walked down the hall. He followed, his arrow pads gliding across the floor. I wanted to step on them and leave nice gray tread marks on the snow white leather toes. It's not secretary. All right, what's a gopher then? I stopped. What? What? Ah, you know, gopher. Hey, Jared, go for this. Hey, Jared, go for that. Hey, Jared, go for gopher, gopher. Uh, that, his nickname plays a big role in the story coming up. So they call him gopher is two things. One, like a little animal, a gopher, like a woodchuck, like... Uh, little things and then also go for as in g-o-f-o-r they're going to make him go for things like go do errands so it means both things go for i just scowled at him he saw the anger in my unpoker face and laughed <laughs> just kidding he said in the nastiest most obnoxious tone a person could come up with then he laughed harder and turned away his arrow pads bouncing off down the hallway squeaking on the floor. I felt more humiliated than I'd felt in a long time as I walked down the hall. 
It wasn't the fact that I was assistant coach that bothered me. It was the fact that Austin knew first and as usual made fun of me, calling me gopher. It was bad enough to feel hidden in his shadow, but to be humiliated, excuse me, that was something else. He was twisting the knife. How would I feel if Austin Pace had never been born? <laughs> yeah, well, let's not talk about it. The fire alarm went off at 1.30. That's right, you guessed it, another school fire. I can't say I wasn't glad to hear the alarm bell. I hadn't been able to concentrate all day because of what had happened that morning. At least now when I could feel angry without having to pay attention to teachers at the same time. It used to be nobody raised much of a fuss when the fire alarm went off. The teachers would just get the class up and funnel them in an orderly manner down the stairway and out into the field. Now it was much quicker and much more serious. It used to be there were all drills or false alarms, but last year, there were three real fires. The last one burned down the gym. Now, as we marched into the hall, I could swear I already smelled smoke. The scene out in the field was much more chaotic than any of the teachers could stand for. Kids were running in the field and the neat little rows of classes were breaking down into mobs of kids, a good many of them pressing up against the fence to see the smoke pouring out of the cafeteria. Now, I don't think the school is necessarily really flammable as much as just whoever's starting the fires is finding things that are, or maybe the story is being told by a bunch of pigs and the school is made of straw and sticks. And someday we're gonna find the school made of bricks and that one does not burn down, I don't know. But yeah, it definitely does seem to burn a lot. I didn't really care to watch the fire. I had my own problem to think about. If I sound heartless, it isn't because I didn't care about anyone left in the school. I'd overheard the principal say the school had been cleared and there was nothing to worry about, except for the cafeteria burning down, which, believe me, is exactly what the cafeteria deserved. While the cafeteria smoked, I fumed, still filled with the anger Austin had put in me that morning. I don't want to talk about it. I told Cheryl when she asked me about the track team. She knew exactly what I meant when I said, and don't ask again. Well, join the club. Why, what's wrong with you? Oh, nothing. It's just that the play they're doing this year is Annie. So? So guess what snotty little Brad is absolutely perfect for the role? Rebecca's trying out? I don't even think she has to. They'll just look at her and give her the role. Um, if you're unfamiliar, Annie is Little Orphan Annie, uh, which is this one. And they came out with a, a newer one, like back in 2014, uh, which I saw with my daughters, and they loved it. Uh, I liked it, too. It was a good movie. And so that's what they're referring to, is the adorable little bobble-haired kid that plays the main role. Apparently, they're saying Rebecca is perfect for it. Cheryl continued to complain to me about Rebecca and other things. I turned to look at the school. The firefighters were standing by the fire truck, doing nothing in particular, which meant that the fire was not a big one and had been put out right away. The cafeteria had been saved, and although it would probably smell like smoke for the rest of the year, we all knew there'd be no more school that day, and not until they were positive there was no fire left, and the building had a chance to air out. Still, they couldn't let us go home until three. So the schoolyard began to resemble a junior high school riot with kids playing all sorts of unruly games that made the teachers all start pulling their hair. A club, said Cheryl. Huh? I asked, not having heard her. I said, we should form a club of all the kids who are second best. <laughs> yeah, right. And one by one, do away with everyone in our way. <laughs> Um, I did mark that section because I do like to do evil laughter because I'm a horrible person and it brings me happiness. No, no, I'm serious. We could have a club just for fun, something that only we could have, and none of the unbeatable kids could be in it, like a, a second best club. That's a stupid idea. No, it's not. We could all go and do things and, and have fun and really make the unbeatable kids jealous that we thought of it before they did. 
we'll be one up on them for a change. Yeah? Okay. Who would be in this club? I don't know. We'd have to think about it for a while and come up with some names. I'll bet there are a lot of kids who want to be in it. My brother, for instance. Nobody else will want to do it. They're going to laugh at us. But if they don't, Jared, we could be starting something big, a secret club that'll go on for years after we've gone on to high school. I thought about this. Carol always had a way of convincing me. This time, she wasn't the one who convinced me. It was someone else. Hey, Jared, someone called. It was that familiar voice, a voice I didn't want to hear. I could almost see those arrow pads and that red hair and those long, bony arms. Hey, Jared, want a race? Asked Austin. First race of the season. So this was it, the challenge. Austin was always the one to challenge first. Now, all right, usually he waited until the second week when he had seen me run and was absolutely sure he'd be able to beat me. This time he asked on the second day. And there were too many kids around me for me to turn down the challenge. Don't you think it'd be better if we waited till the field was clear? <laughs> Isn't this clear enough? I turned around. Yeah, sure enough, the field was clear enough to race. Austin had come over with about 10 kids and more kids were joining us because everyone knew what he was up to and everyone knew about our rivalry. Excuse me. Maybe we should wait until your legs grow some more, he said. Everyone laughed. I laughed, too. It was better to be laughed with than laughed at, right? Inside, I wasn't laughing, though. Fine, then. Right now. Austin smiled, that crocodile smile. Hey, Greg, eh, go about 60 yards and judge us. Greg Miller, one of the new seventh graders on the team, obeyed as if he'd been given an order by God. So this is where it begins, I thought. This year's competition, this year's war. I felt strong. I mean, I felt ready to run. I felt like I always felt when I raced with Austin that maybe this time I would beat him. We got down in the starting position, and then Austin got up. Hey, wait, 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 he said. Took off his precious shoes, then his socks. He was going to run barefoot. Okay, okay, okay. He got back down. Are you ready to lose? He asked. I didn't answer. Martin Bricker got ready to start us as more and more kids turned to watch. Even teachers were watching. So this is where it begins. On your mark, get set, go! I took off like a bullet, cutting through the wind, pounding the grass with every last bit of my strength. I didn't turn to look but I could see in the corner of my eye that we were neck and neck. Ten yards were gone. I looked toward Greg down the field and concentrated on turning everything I had into power. This is for every time you beat me in races as a kid. I pushed harder. This is for when you came back to do it again last year. I pushed harder. This is for how you made me feel this morning. I pushed harder. We were still neck and neck. Thirty yards were gone. Thirty to go. The cheers faded away behind us. And this is for challenging me in front of the whole school. This is for everything you'll ever try to do to me for the rest of our lives. This is for those stupid running shoes you wear. 40 yards gone. I was ahead of him by a foot. I was beating him. I pushed harder. 15 yards to go. 15 to go. And then, like he'd been holding it all back, he flew out in front of me. No, he didn't inch out. He flew out like I was standing still. He moved like a machine in fast forward, a ship blasting into hyperspace. He was a foot in front of me, two feet, three feet. He turned to look at me and smiled that awful smile of his. I lunged. I dove forward in a wild attempt to reach the finish line before he did, but he was there before I hit the ground. I was moving so fast that I skidded along the grass, skinning my elbows and ruining my pants. The agony of defeat. I felt like that skier who wipes out on the ski jump every Sunday on Wide World of Sports. The agony of defeat, skinned elbows and ruined pants and a laughing lost in space. By now, 
kids were crowding around Austin. Wow, did you see Austin take off? Wow, he really beat him bad. Wow, Austin is so fast. Wow this, wow that. Austin was loving every last bit of it. They crowded around him and left me there on the ground to examine my elbows. You shouldn't race Austin, kid, said a seventh grader. Austin beats everybody. Austin looked down at me. He was barely winded. You ran pretty good. <laughs> For a gopher, he said, and everyone laughed. Gopher, 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 gopher. Austin raised his hands to conduct them all as they chanted, gopher, 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 over and over again. I could have killed him. I could have ripped him limb from limb. Then I thought about Tyson McGaw. No, I wasn't Tyson. I was civilized. and I wasn't going to attack Austin. Instead, I stood up, brushed myself off, and waited till the gopher chanting stopped. Then I looked Austin straight in the face and put out my hand. Nice race, Austin. I shook his hand. Let me tell you, it took all of my strength to do it, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. See you around, gopher. I turned and left while everyone crowded around Austin. My elbows had just begun hurting. Cheryl was there waiting for me. That's one thing about her. She was always there. She never laughed at me either. Are you okay? I looked back toward Austin and then turned to Cheryl and asked, so, what are we going to call our club? So there you go. So now it's time to officially start recruiting people and, and begin their club. Turn the page to 50 and you have the charter at Stonehenge. This is the chapter you're going to have to read on your own, which is chapter four. So here is your other part of your homework. Finishing Shadow Club chapter four, charter at Stonehenge, which goes to page 67. I'm not reading this chapter with you. Part of what I have to do as a teacher person is make you have to read things on your own. But hello, Janaya. Um, but you can use audiobook if you want to. That is fine with me. Uh, you can read it with your own brain if you want to to try and help you out from there. Um, from that point, uh, it'll be due when we have class. So either Thursday or Friday, or you guys, Friday is when it comes due. Um, I will answer questions and I will talk about it, but I'm not going to go through and read it. This is where you're going to get to meet all these other people who join the club and they're going to begin doing their first pranks uh, or they're going to start doing the attacking and stuff like that. Um, they are going to mention a place called Stonehenge. They're going to talk about the fact they meet in this old destroyed building that they keep referring to as Stonehenge. This is what Stonehenge looks like. It's the place in England which they don't really know why it was created, but it has all these stone things around it. And so that they are meeting at like an old broken down house. This is sort of what their house looks like, just to give you an idea of what the Stonehenge thing is. So that's my homework for you. I excel and reading. If you haven't read it before, then you'll just be out of luck when it comes time because we'll end up talking about it and just sort of leaving you guys behind. I believe we're getting some feedback on that one. Um, but class is over. Um, Tomorrow is when I get a chance to do the uh, whole asking of you guys with the connections, but I'm not going to bother with this today. And Mr. Bro.